Hi, my name is Hare no Suke Tatekawa, and I'm a Rakugo storyteller. Can you name some of Japan's world first achievements? There's the bullet train, retort pouch foods, the dry cell battery, and the lithium ion battery. Those were all first made or commercialized in Japan. Those are some big world's firsts. And there's another very big world's first we can't forget. That's why I'm here today in this wonderful public bathhouse. With this painting of Mount Fuji. A huge world's first took place in the city of Kobe, Japan. This is the Riken Center for Computational Science. It's a world-class facility for innovative computer science work. In this building lives the supercomputer Fugaku. In June and again in November 2020, Fugaku was officially certified as the fastest supercomputer in the world. It was also the world's first to earn that distinction in four different computing benchmarks. The top 500, HPCG, HPL AI, and Graph 500. These four rankings measure supercomputer performance on different types of tasks. Fugaku took first place in all four at once, showing the versatility of its outstanding performance. It's hard enough to be the best in the world at one thing, but Fugaku ranked best in four. Four crowns! That's amazing! It's like being the best tennis player in the world, and also number one in golf, boxing, and Formula One racing. Apparently, it beat all the other powerful supercomputers around the world by a large margin. Hearing that kind of makes a person wonder how the Fugaku came about. The concept for the Fugaku began taking shape around 2010, before its predecessor, the K-computer, was even fully operational. The real engineering work on Fugaku began in earnest in 2014, taking six years to complete. The goal was to perform up to 100 times faster than the K-computer on a range of applications. I actually didn't think it would be that hard when we started it. And almost every year, another obstacle arose, and we would clear it. That's how it felt. The first thing they worked on was designing the CPUs, which are the brains of a supercomputer. They outfitted the CPUs with some new technologies. Supercomputer design veterans Fujitsu used state-of-the-art, ultra-thin, 7 nanometer production techniques to equip the CPU with 48 cores. That's six times as many as on the K-computer. The CPUs include a new built-in network interface called Tofu-D that connects the CPUs in a massively parallel network. Stacked high bandwidth memory is placed on the same silicon die directly adjacent to the CPUs. In other words, until now, the CPUs were connected to the memory and the network via a printed circuit board. No matter how fast the network and memory were, the printed circuit board slowed things down. But now with the CPUs, the network interface and the memory on the same silicon chip, each component can demonstrate its full capabilities. These changes allow Fugaku to perform much faster. It's like the CPUs, network, and memory used to be in separate rooms. But now they're all in the same room, so they can communicate with each other much more effectively. The most significant thing in building the Fugaku was different teams working together on the design. This collaborative approach is called, appropriately enough, co-design. In the co-design approach, the hardware engineers repeatedly consult with the software engineers that will write applications for the completed supercomputer. Each team responds to the other's opinions and requests. It took many researchers and engineers to create a single supercomputer design that performs optimally for many different kinds of applications. 
more than 1,200 co-design meetings were held. These collaborations helped a range of user applications to perform 30 to 100 times more effectively, earning Fugaku its four crowns. So, the Fugaku creators and the users got together and shared their opinions with each other. That's co-design. Makes sense to me. The CPU they designed uses the same ARM instruction set as many smartphones and game machines all over the world. That means it's technically possible to run your favorite smartphone apps on Fugaku. So, it sounds like we have a sort of connection to Fugaku. But they say the performance is equivalent to 20 million smartphones. 20 million! Maybe some of you have already figured out why I'm in a typical Japanese public bathhouse with a picture of Mount Fuji today. That's right, Fugaku is another name for Mount Fuji, the tallest peak in Japan. That height represents the high performance of Fugaku, and the wide base represents its broad versatility. The hallmarks of supercomputer Fugaku are just like Mount Fuji's. So, the world-famous Mount Fuji actually led to the world's first four-crown winning Fugaku. But, there are other reasons why Fugaku is Fugaku. Careful attention was given to make the Fugaku extremely energy efficient. Part of that efficiency was achieved by having the CPUs, the networking, and the memory on the same silicon chip. The Fugaku CPUs also have a feature called power control knobs that can dynamically regulate power usage, so they consume only about one-third the power of other general-purpose CPUs. In another improvement over the K-computer, by rearranging the distribution of the power supply units, fewer voltage converters are needed, wasting 10% less electricity. Overall, these changes make the Fugaku nearly 20 times as energy efficient as the K-computer. Energy efficiency is actually an important point. I assumed that increasing the computing performance 100 times would require 100 times as much power. But they say Fugaku's power consumption was kept to 30 megawatts maximum, which is only about twice that of the K-computer. And in actual operation, it apparently uses about the same amount of power as the K-computer. It must have taken a lot of wisdom and ingenuity to get Fugaku to perform as needed while keeping that energy efficiency. The Fugaku's energy saving system only uses as much power as necessary. As a result, its power consumption fluctuates from less than the K-computer up to a maximum about twice that of the K-computer. It saves energy, but the amount of power drawn can fluctuate greatly, more than three times as much as with the K-computer. So, before bringing in the Fugaku, they installed additional transformers on the second floor of the computer building, and added many more heat exchangers to boost cooling capacity for the CPUs. The pre-existing electrical equipment couldn't have handled the Fugaku's large power fluctuations, but their experience with the K-computer helped them devise a highly dependable electrical system. Facilities are something like a hidden engine. Things are expected to work, but when things go wrong, we can catch a lot of blame. But I feel proud that we're doing something here that no one else is. Fugaku gets additional support from equipment that's hidden from view, but provides a stable foundation. Well, Behind-the-scenes assistance is something that's always good to have. There are still more reasons why Fugaku is Fugaku. They say assembling it was quite a challenge. The computer itself was manufactured at Fujitsu IT Products in the city of Kahoku in Ishikawa Prefecture. They knew from the outset that assembling the racks would be time-consuming, 
To make it faster, they automated processes and added special assembly line equipment and image inspection devices. Adding a second assembly line created a system that could complete the work in about one-third the allotted time. These time-saving efforts would help them assemble and deliver the computer racks on time. In December 2019, the assembled racks began to ship to Kobe. But just then, when everything was proceeding smoothly, something unexpected happened. The COVID-19 pandemic. To meet the delivery schedule, they took all possible steps to ensure the health of everyone, from the factory to the installation site. And by being careful to procure all the parts needed for the installation, deliveries proceeded as planned. In May 2020, the last of the 432 racks arrived in Kobe. That's impressive. I can't imagine it was easy to proceed with on-schedule delivery during a pandemic. But delivery was just one step. The real work was still ahead. Then came a moment of truth for Fugaku. Before it had officially started operating, Fugaku was put to work to help people during the global crisis. In April 2020, Japan had declared a state of emergency in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Before it was even fully assembled, the Japanese government asked Riken to use a scaled-down version of Fugaku in the fight against the coronavirus. One of the results was a program that models indoor environments to better understand how droplets move through the air when people talk or cough. These visualizations helped show how the coronavirus could be transmitted. They also examined mask usage and confirmed that masks are actually very effective. Fugaku produced useful findings even before operating at full scale. I wonder what else it might be able to tell us. In the basic sciences, it's hoped that Fugaku will tell us more about the origins of the universe. It could also accelerate drug discovery and new medical treatments that will help people live longer and healthier lives. It might better forecast weather and natural disasters, such as earthquakes and tsunamis, making people around the world safer. It could speed the development of energy-efficient technologies and the adoption of clean energy systems. And it may accelerate the introduction of new materials and innovative manufacturing processes, making industries more competitive. This has the potential to revolutionize manufacturing. Testing is a critical part of product development. If those calculations can be done on a powerful and easy-to-use computer like Fugaku, all that testing might be replaced with computer simulations. There are more vital calculations than ever before in predicting disasters, climate change, and so on. I believe providing more accurate simulations will be crucial. Fugaku can help us find solutions to problems in a wide range of fields, providing support for the ultra-informed Society 5.0 of tomorrow. Japan's Society 5.0 initiative is intended to tackle both economic development and societal issues. It aims for a human-centered rather than technology-centered society. Not like the AI and robot-dominated societies we've seen in movies. What a relief. RCCS director Satoshi Matsuoka shared his thoughts about Fugaku. We built the fastest and easiest to use supercomputer in the world. I think this is a revival, in a way, for Japan's computer and semiconductor industries. Supercomputers are built to be used, and in the course of building Fugaku, we managed to produce some state-of-the-art technologies. But these technologies aren't just for Fugaku, they'll be widely used. And in the course of using Fugaku itself, this is the fastest machine in the world. So I strongly believe it will produce countless results 
that will help bring about science and technology innovations and solve societal problems. I feel reassured by what Director Matsuoka said. The future looks bright. I can't wait. Fugaku is also being used for other new initiatives. An event was held that let students run their own programs on this supercomputer. One or more of these aspiring scientists may one day build a computer even more amazing than Fugaku. That's another thing to look forward to. We asked the project leader and the RCCS director to describe Fugaku in a single word. I'd say the number 360. It runs a full range of applications. I'd say Fugaku. That's what it is, Mount Fuji. It's a supercomputer that represents the pinnacle of Japanese technology. Maybe we could say there's only one Mount Fuji, but it's tall enough to look out for everyone. One final thought. Now is a great time to leave the computing to Fugaku's own devices. And that's all from me.